Okay, I believe we are live. Excellent. Thanks, Ben. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our online information session. I'm very excited to do this live stream with you this evening on Facebook. We're also going to be on Discord as well. And so there'll be some links in the chat as to how you can join in either on the Discord channel. And if you want to put in comments on the Facebook video, we'll try and keep track of what people are saying and the questions that have been asked along the way. So by way of introduction, I'm Dahi Gleeson. I am the lead candidate for Liberals for Climate Flux Network here in WA. And the purpose of this evening's presentation is really to give you an idea as to what it is we're doing at Flux and Liberals for Climate as a project in general. And then we're going to share some information with you as to you know, the, one of the really interesting projects that we're working on, which is the, the voting, the digital uh, technology aspect of how we're bringing people into this digital democracy world. We'll also speak a little bit about how you can get involved in our organization because there's so many ways that you can be involved. And what we discussed this evening is really just going to be the tip of the iceberg. So there's loads of ways you can get involved. But the first way to get involved really is just to become aware of what it is that we're doing. And we'll try and share some of that information with you, uh, with, with you this evening. As well, if you have any additional questions, as I said, feel free to put them in the Facebook chat. Join us on Discord or you can send us emails or messages and we'll always try and follow up with people to answer any questions that you might have along the way. But Ben, I'll ask now if you can move us on to the, the first slide this evening. So the big question that we get a lot of the time is like, who is Flux? What are you trying to do? What is it that you're trying to set out and achieve? What's different about you? And it all starts with problem statements about what are the problems and the issues that we're experiencing in our democracy and across a number of democracies across the world. Now, the problems that we identify here are things that we believe are very common themes that come up, come up for people. And the core one being about people not feeling represented by representative democracy, where politicians get elected to parliament and then once there, the people feel that there's a bit of a disconnect between them, the voters, the constituents, and their elected representatives. Now, this comes about because of the way that incentives are structured inside our current political system, where political parties are incentivized to get re-elected. So they do whatever it is they can do around election time to ensure that they get elected. Then once they're in parliament, they'll do whatever it is that's required to ensure that when the next election comes around, they can get re-elected again. And there's a lot of a lot of moving parts in this problem because it involves things like donations and money and influence from outside aspects, trying to all coming together around this phenomenon that we know as parliamentary politics. And so we see this in issues where you know, groups of issues have been bundled into partisan sides of politics, where one side of politics is expected to represent certain sides and certain issues, and other sides and parties represent other issues. When the reality is, is that issues would be best dealt with on their own merits. But unfortunately, that's not necessarily how things, how things happen. And unfortunately, the remedy to this that we currently have is elections. But elections only come about once every three to four years, depending on the jurisdiction that's been, uh, that's been looked at. And giving voters the opportunity to change their government once every three to four years, yes, that is a viable mechanism to try and error correct, error correct along the way. But we're of the opinion that we would actually be much better served by focusing on issues and trying to correct our stance and position on each individual issue rather than having to do a wholesale uh, clear out of government to try and fix errors. So as we say in the slide here, democracy should exist every day, not once every few years. And this is really what we're trying to do with, uh, you know, with the solution that we're proposing. So the way that we talk about trying to solve this issue is, as I said, about trying to create a more direct link between voters, constituents, citizens, and their elected representatives. Now, this is a model that might be quite new and different for some people, but it's actually a very well established model that has been used, for example, in Switzerland for many, many years. Now, they've formally incorporated 
uh, the federal direct democracy system since the beginning of the 20th century, but it can trace its history back in a num few hundred years prior to that. And the core essence of this more direct system is that citizens will be the ultimate arbiters of the legislation that's presented, that politicians will be legislators who will create and decide on the legislation that will be brought to Parliament, but citizens will have a, a direct input in whether or not that, that legislation should pass or be rejected. Now, this is a key innovation of sorts because it, it removes this kind of, uh, this thing that we've seen in recent times where politicians become the central point where it's very easy for for, for them to be corrupted in essence and for political parties to be corrupted because you just have to get access to a small number of politicians in order to sway a vote one way or another. Whereas with this more direct system where it's spread out across citizens, it makes it much more difficult to sway people on issues. You've got a lot more people that you need to convince that they need to vote one way or another to, you know, to move them on an issue. But also... Most importantly, like this gives people the opportunity to understand and take part in politics, gives people agency in their own lives and gives people a way to feel that they are part of a society and doing something you know, that they are able to actually have a direct influence and contribution towards. And we do this via a technology system that we'll speak about uh, briefly, where people get to vote directly on the issues that they care about. And this is a really, this is a really, really important innovation because there's so much that goes on in politics that we don't expect people to be across every single issue, to be up to date on every single piece of legislation that is before Parliament. But people should have the means to be able to interact directly with the issues and the legislation that they care about and that actually will have a material impact on their lives and their well-being. And so th this really is about us moving into a world where we make democracy accessible and interactive on a 24-7 basis, making it much more real-time, much more feedback in that process so that we can do this error correction along the way. So what we're doing around election time as we run as a political party to get involved in standard elections, giving people the opportunity to vote for candidates and a party that will put forward this way of thinking about how to do politics. This model of politics that we, called, that we call digital democracy or digital direct democracy, a number of ways to describe it. The digital aspect we'll speak about in a moment, but ultimately using technology and smartphones to bring people into the political decision-making process. Now, at the moment in WA, we're running uh, in the upcoming election as Liberals for Climate. We recently changed the name of the WA branch to Liberals for Climate. As we say here, we're still the same party with the same values of trying to promote this uh, digital democracy way of doing things. Now, we chose Liberals for Climate uh, for a number of reasons, but one of them being to, to get us to bring our brand and our name and our party into the mainstream to try and get a bit more attention than we were getting simply as flux. And we chose climate because... Whatever your views are on the climate issue, nobody can deny that it is one of the most important, uh, contentious and you know, most divisive and controversial issues in the Australian political uh, sphere at the moment. And it's something that you know, a lot of people are talking about, a lot of people are concerned about, a lot of people have views on this. And what, we, what we're trying to say to people is we recognize you have views on this and we want to bring you into this process. We want to bring you into the politics around climate issues. Participate, tell us what you think, be involved. And the name also speaks to the fact that a lot of people do feel unrepresented by some of the positions taken by major parties. And so it's unfortunate that in recent times in Australia that the term liberal from a political sense has been associated with the conservative centre-right party when liberal values are actually much wider than, than that. And they speak to, you know, 
really to some of the core foundational principles as to how we organize our organize our society. And so with this name, we are looking to speak to these people who would assign themselves the, the moniker of liberal in the sense that they aspire and ascribe to liberal values of freedom and equality. And so that's that's what we're getting at with the Liberals for Climate uh, in the upcoming WA election. As, as we say, we're still the same party. We still have the same core objectives of bringing people into politics via digital democracy. But we've just decided... Of trying, you know, we've decided to try different ways to to do this, to really inject ourselves into the debate, make ourselves a little bit more relevant for people, so that we can present them with what our core mission is, which is around using the technology to bring people into decision making via digital democracy. Now, on that note, I'll hand over to to Ben Kelly, who's going to speak a little bit about the technology aspect that we're using to try and make politics and parliamentary business a little bit more accessible for people. Thanks. Hi, yeah. I am uh, Ben. I am one of the uh, developers of the open source project, which is Digipol. And Digipol is uh, basically the platform on which Flux and Liberals for Climate runs. Uh, it is the way that we have devised the solution to the problem of how do we give everybody a voice and how do we give everybody an opportunity to speak and to understand politics and to fully engage with it uh, on their own terms. So the first thing that I uh, wanted to highlight is just that solving the problem of digital voting or voting in any system is... Uh, Got a lot of condition, lot of got a lot of conditions that you need to fulfill. Uh, there's a lot of different things, and some of which can conflict with each other and be very hard to merge together. Uh, and that is part of the reason why digital voting is still a system that is not, you know, uh, commonly used around the world. There is a there is a uh, you know political side to it, and then there is also the technological side. Uh, so I just thought I would uh, go through some of these uh, uh, concerns that basically are raised when it comes to digital voting, and then we'll talk about our attempts at solving this. And the idea is that you know we are constantly in a developing state, and we are constantly in a process of uh, moving forward and ideating solutions as we move forward. And that's the most important thing for you know any party to do is uh, stay with the times and always be looking for new options. So the first one, and probably the most important one, is that it needs to be anonymous. So only you know how you vote. This is a very central tenet to a lot of voting systems. Uh, you know, you shouldn't have a situation where your vote is held against you. You shouldn't have a situation where you are co uh, coerced into voting a certain way under repercussions. You know, you want to make sure that uh, the way you vote is entirely your say and it's entirely your opinion and, you know, what you have devised from your understanding of the situation. The, the second one, and that leads into that, is that it needs to be secure. Nobody can change your votes but you. Uh, so in blind ballots, the idea of that is that once your ballot is placed, it is in a locked box, it is very easy to keep that secure. Uh, and then there is verifiable. And verifiable is uh, something that even traditional uh, voting techniques such as, you know, ballot, ballot drop-offs and things like that uh, have had contention in the past, not necessarily the most well-founded contention because it is a, a very thorough process, but there have been issues in the past of actually being able to verify that your vote has been counted uh, and that your say has been heard into a situation. Uh, and this is, this is one area in particular that we think digital voting is actually very good at. Uh, and we'll talk a bit about that in a second. Uh, and finally, more on the specific digital side of voting uh, and the direct democracy side, uh, you know, its accessibility is really important because in a more traditional system, you're only voting once every few years. Uh, it doesn't need to be super accessible because it's not an everyday thing. But if you're trying to make your voting system an everyday thing and if you want people to be engaging in democracy all the time and you know for it to be a core part of our lives 
then it needs to be something that you know anyone can do from anywhere at any time. Uh, and our solution to this is using phones and other digital platforms for voting. Finally, uh, and this is a really important one, not just for the voting, but for the political system as a whole, is it needs to be community driven. Uh, so it needs to be, pol politics needs to be a foundation where you're solving real problems that are brought up by the actual citizens who, you know, would benefit from the political system. Uh, and the idea of establishing a digital voting platform that informs that community and lets them understand how everything works and drives this political process is a very core value for the uh, Liberals for Climate and Flux Party. So now we'll move on to the app itself, Digipol. So you can see a screenshot, screenshot of it in the, uh, the right-hand side. You can see uh, that uh, it's listing a few separate bills and it lists their state. And you can also see little icons that uh, have you know, certain categories and filters applied to them. Uh, so the, the, uh, the Digipol app is currently in an open beta. You can download it right away. You can uh, have a play around with it. You can see what there is. There is a, a, a fairly active development community that uh, we are fostering. Uh, and we basically allow for people to make, uh, you know, add their suggestions and make the changes. Uh, and it's, you know, feels like you're really contributing and building towards a, a bigger, a bigger piece of, you know, uh, this political picture. So one of the things that I think makes Digipol what it is and makes it so successful of, for its platform is that it's fully transparent. Uh, and, you know, it's an open source app. Anyone can go to the GitHub page. Anybody can view the code. Anybody can uh, view the blockchain that all of the votes go onto. Uh, all of these technologies, all of these processes are fully accessible to the wider audience. Uh, and that just really helps solidify the security and, you know, understandability uh, of this system. You know, it's not something that ha uses proprietary IP. It's not something that uses secret technology that if it was to get out, it would, you know, change the system. Uh, it's something that is very open and very understandable to hopefully everyone. Uh, then there is also the bills themselves. Uh, you know, you get to see what the politicians see. So technically everything, uh, all these bills that are on this app are publicly available. They are accessible, but are not necessarily the easiest thing in the world to have a look at. Uh, they're not necessarily the most comprehensible, uh, comprehensible uh, thing to you know, the average citizen. And one of the goals of this app is to bring those bills and bring the, bring the things that politicians are actually voting on to the forefront and give, the, uh, give people the opportunity to like, really understand uh, what is changing and, you know, what is being proposed and uh, what they can actually have their say on. They don't just have to think of these nebulous issues of, you know, what do you like, what do you not like. You can actually look at specifically the things that are changing and the things that would go into law that you can have the impact on. Uh, and finally, there is also just the ability to vote yes or no on each bill individually. So this is really where it comes down to decoupling this idea of you have, you know, uh, things you care about and things you might not care about and you don't have to say well I don't really agree with you know most of this party's views but there's this one issue that they you know they would uh, side with me on and I really care about that uh, and when you stretch that across to all of the people who have their own opinion on specific issues and when you view you know this idea of like decoupling issues from each other and making it so people can actually vote on what they care about and not just go along with what people have to say. That is really the thing that makes this system different to uh, anything that like I at least have ever seen before in my life. Uh, and I think a lot of people have. So yeah, this is basically a opportunity for a lot of people to get involved in something that is like growing and changing, you know, every day and really see this fundamentally new way of engaging with politics be developed in real time. I'm going to hand over uh, to Alex now to talk about the other more uh, immediate aspects that you can uh, have to help the party out. Hi everyone, welcome. Um, as, as Ben said, thank you very much. I will be walking us through some of the ways we can get involved right now. Um, so starting with 
the sharing of content. Um, one of the most important things for any political party is for people to know who you are. So we're focusing quite heavily in this campaign on our Facebook and YouTube, but we do have um, all social media channels. And anytime you can share something that we post or, or pass it on to a friend that might be really interested in it, um, that really helps get our name out there. Um, Liberal for Climate has a social media channel for all of them, so you can search for Liberal for Climate to find our social medias, all we're posting links in the chat. Um, so check them out and pass on details to anyone you think might be interested in. Um, the other major social media platform that we use is Discord for a lot of our organization. Um, that includes, we have a weekly Discord meeting every Monday night um, where we highly encourage all of our members and, and people who are interested to jump online, get involved. Uh, you don't have to speak, you can just listen and watch. Um, but it's, it's, a really, it's a really good way to sort of get an understanding of where we are as a party and what we're doing. You get weekly updates on what's going on with the campaign and other ways you might be able to get involved in, in more specific projects or things like that. Um, the Discord also gives you a forum for answering, asking and answering questions. Uh, so we, we actually highly encourage people to have a go at answering something. If you see someone ask a question that you think you know the answer to, and if you don't know the answer, um, hang around and you might find out. Um, organizing with other people for collaborative projects is also mostly done through the Discord. Uh, we have a bunch of channels for various kinds of projects, including our, our um, developers and our lovely developer team, um, but also other projects like um, creating content and organizing nights like this um, and, and things for organizing around election day. Um, we also have a feedback channel in there and we have any feedback you can give us, whether it's good or bad, it's really important to us to understand what we're doing well and what we're doing poorly for the community because in the end we are about getting that democratic representation and that's that's really what we that's really what we stand for we want to represent people better and you can tell us how to do that so um, we would love your feedback uh, so speaking of um, projects you can get involved in uh, content creation is one of the uh, easiest and most fun ways to get involved around especially in the lead up to election time um, whether you have an interest in, in putting together memes or graphics, whether you just have an idea and you want to share it and someone else collaborate with you and help out, um, we can do that all through the Flux channel. We've got a media channel um, for people who are interested in creating content. Um, you can also get more involved and create full videos and, and graphics if you're, if you're really keen. Um, and we love to see it. We love to uh, share it. We have a, a bunch of official channels and often when we troll through those Discord channels, we'll find things that we really, really like. And we'll share them through the official channels and get them all authorized, put on posters, and you might, you know, get to see your work up on a big poster on election day, which would be great fun. Uh, there's a couple of examples there of some of the lovely uh, work we've had done by our uh, voters so far. It's been really cool. Uh, one of the other major ways in the lead up and actually on election day is logistical support. So in the lead up, uh, we often do phone banking where we'll call. We have a quite a large member list of people that have indicated at some point that they'd like to be involved and we call around and basically see how specifically they can get involved now and that just takes people on phones and you can do that from anywhere and then give you a list and you can sort of get involved. Um, other things, particularly if you're in Western Australia, uh, getting involved in printing and transport of, of products like posters and that sort of stuff in the lead up to election day is really, really handy and any way we can assist our candidates because they're, they're always very, very stressed out and busy in the, in the lead up to an election. Uh, we'd be trying to assist them anywhere we can. Uh, so if you're interested in any of that or if you've just got any kind of other skills that you think you might be able to donate that we haven't really talked about yet um, in the lead up to election, jump online, sign up to the volunteer form in our Liberals for Climate website uh, and, and we can uh, figure out where you can best sort of fit and help us out. Uh, funding is always a really uh, critical thing, um, as you probably picked up. A part, big part of our uh, thing is trying to avoid the corruption of politics, and so we do not take um, big donations from from uh, 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 corporate entities, um, which means we are funded entirely by members and, and people like you. Um, so anytime you can donate money, uh, even even five or ten bucks, but as much you know, as much as or as little as you're, you're able to part with, um, and and encouraging your friends to do the same uh, is, is really really handy. Um, almost all of our funding goes directly into our digital marketing campaign, uh, which is mostly Facebook ads, Instagram ads, YouTube ads, uh, and Google Analytics sort of Google ads sort of stuff. Um, we have a, a small portion which is 
devoted to flyers and posters for for the actual election day. But yeah, for the most part, our, our funding goes directly into our marketing campaign to get more eyes on us. And then we get to election day. Uh, on election day, obviously, the first and most important thing we, we can get you to do is vote one for Liberals for Climate. Uh, we would love to have your vote. Um, the other really major thing that we, we love to have people do is handing out pamphlets on, 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 at, like on a polling booth. Uh, it's actually currently one of the most effective ways that you can get involved in the Australian political system. It's incredible how much you can swing a single polling station just by having a representative of a party there to you know talk about what we're trying to do, answer questions. Or, or just refer people to our website so that, that they can get their questions answered. But just letting people know that we exist and showing them who we are and what we care about and why is just such an effective way of engaging with Australian politics currently. It's 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 it's, it's really it's really quite a quite it's, it's quite a fun day as well. I enjoy a polling day. It's just really um, really good to spend a whole day talking with people about politics. I love it. Um, there's also, as I said, logistical support on the day um, and, of course, spreading the word to your friends because, again, everyone who's heard about us is a potential voter. Uh, so just a quick wrap up. Um, obviously, join the Discord, ask any questions you've got, download the Digipol app, check it out, uh, give us feedback, let us know what you think. Um, you can also jump on to the, uh, the, the GitHub and, and check out the developer side of things if you're interested in how it's all coming together because it is all open source. Uh, creating and sharing content is really, really valuable. Donating and encouraging people to donate, again, really, really valuable. And then we love people to, to volunteer on or, or before election day. Um, and of course, vote one, Liberals for Climate. Uh, thank you so much uh, for attending this night. That's that's pretty much the end of our, our official presentation. I'm going to pass you back to our candidate, Darcy, and uh, we might move over to the Discord and answer some questions if you like. Fantastic. Thanks, Alex, and thanks, Ben, and thanks to everyone for tuning in and watching us. I think we have a few questions from the from the Facebook comments that I might just speak to to now as well. One question was raised by, by a comment from somebody said that this system would be great for local councils. Absolutely agree. This system would be ideal for local councils, for small community groups of people who want to get involved and you know, come together in a way to bring collaborative decision making into a space where they can test it out and see how it would work. Now, we would be all for implementing this at local council level. The only thing that stops us from doing it at this point in time is the administrative burden associated with, uh, with the scale of doing it at a local council level. Uh, as if people are familiar with local councils, they'd know that there tends to be a very dynamic and fast changing set of issues coming up every single month in a very short time frame around decisions being made. And so in terms of us implementing a, you know, a perfect implementation of our system at local council level, it would be quite a you know, quite a task for us to keep track of all of the issues, ensuring that everything was in there and then ensuring that enough people were participating for it to, to work at that level. But conceptually, absolutely, it could work. Now, this is, and this is where we would put it out to somebody who, where we would kind of present the question or the, or the challenge to someone and say, if this is something that you are interested in, because our system is designed in an open source way, it can be taken and you know, these add-ons and modifications can be brought in to add in this sort of functionality or to fork the code, as it's called, to implement it in this way. But it requires people to do this work in order to make it happen. And so I would encourage people to either you know, try and find those developer friends of yours or those tech savvy people who would be able to write the code and do the work that would be involved in helping us do this or to start mapping out what would be entailed in, you know, in understanding the, the schema and the patterns that would be associated with implementing this at a local council level. 
for us to get the most, I suppose, bang for our buck or the most kind of leverage or to open the door as wide as possible and make it as accessible for people as possible, the open beta of Digipol, the Digipol app, which you can experience at digipol.app, we'll have links for that in the comments as well. We've initially opened it up or, or put in Australian federal issues in there to just make it as wide ranging and accessible for as many people as possible. The more granular or more local we make it, you know, we're going to start making the potential audience for any instance of the app much smaller and smaller and smaller. So for now, we want to try and cast the, wet, the net as wide as possible, get as many people aware of what it is that we're doing, onboard people into the app, get people using it, get them familiar with how it works, the processes involved with it. And then over time, I've no doubts that people will be able to start taking that information, taking those ways of working in those processes and going, this would work really well at, you know, as you said, at local council level or even at community, like for any sort of community group. But it really just is a matter of the administrative burden and the costs associated with, with doing an implementation that's preventing us from doing this at this point in time. Once we get a little bit more momentum with our organization, get more people using it, have more developers on board, we will look to start seeing how we can start implementing it in more bespoke and nuanced ways to start solving those sorts of like real grassroots community problems. But a great problem or a great uh, comment and observation, uh, Deb, via the Facebook. Thank you for that. My, my uh, thought was always uh, strata boards. Strata boards have a lot of people who have a lot of very strong opinions on things uh, and they don't meet very often. So it's, it's a perfect case study. Great. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just revert as well on the other question around the, the Liberals for Climate name and why we didn't choose another name such as uh, digital democracy and so forth. One of the key reasons was we wanted to be a little bit controversial and to raise eyebrows and to for people to ask questions and for people to try and, you know, not necessarily, you know, as I said, yeah, just to cause a little bit of controversy to get ourselves into the into the mix for election time, because, you know, we're working at like our core ideas haven't changed in terms of the digital democracy type solutions that we're, that we're looking to, to implement. As a party, like one of our core ways of operating as well as a, as a group is that we encourage experimentation. And we see this with the development of the, of the app as well in particular, where the developers will come along and have ideas about things. And we encourage people to, you know, if you have an idea, like let's test it out. Let's see how it would work. And same with all of the other things that we try and do as a party, whether it's a new initiative is to try and you know, try and boost membership numbers with a certain style of messaging or using a certain social media platform or certain types of imaging. We like to apply the scientific process of testing things out. And as we said at the beginning with the uh, changing the name to Liberals for Climate, it is very much an experiment for us as well, because we, we are here, like our work is going to see us working on this project for a long period of time. This is a, realistically a 20 year plus project for a wider group of people in society who will come and participate in this. And along the way, we're going to have to try and experiment with different things in terms of our naming, our branding, how we conduct uh, our campaigns during elections, because we are operating as a wholly volunteer driven organization and so any potential leverage points or you know any potential yeah any potential opportunities we have to leverage ourselves we will consider those and experiment with them and as i said given the given the overarching sentiment that exists in australia at the moment around climate issues we felt that it was appro appropriate and timely for us to demonstrate to the market that liberal values you know exist outside of a party that you know outside of a party with that name that are actually a conservative center right party and who have also left a considerable number of their potential supporters alienated with their like with that particular party's 
association and relationship with the fossil fuel industries as facilitated through the donation process and as is then demonstrated and observable via the policy and the legislation that has come through Parliament. Like we want to make a very clear call out of the fact that corporate donations, in particular from the fossil fuel industries, have influenced parliamentary and policy outcomes over the last few years. Like that relationship exists and it's there for anybody to examine. And the question that we put to people is, is this how you want, is this how you want our democracy to function? Is this how we should be doing things? Some people will say, yes, you know, free market, freedom of speech, corporations should get to donate in this way if they want to. And a case could be made for that. But we would, our model of democracy would put, as we said, would put more of the responsibility for deciding about legislation onto citizens rather than just allowing corporations to come along and influence uh, centralized entities, i.e. their politicians in parliament, to get the outcomes that they, they want. So we're experimenting with our name and with our brand. Everything we do, we're, we're experimenting and trying to build and develop and flesh out at the moment. And if you have ideas as to how it is you think we should be doing things, get involved in our organization. And when I say get involved, I don't just mean send us a comment and or send us an email saying, this is what you should do. Get involved by building something. Get involved by putting together a, you know, bringing together a group of people who you think might be able to contribute. There, like, this is an open source project by, it, by its very definition, by the way that we're set up as an organization, meaning that anybody can get involved, but getting involved means that you have to do something. And so if you feel, if you're watching this and you feel like I'm speaking to you right now, Take a moment to just, you know, recognize that you're being spoken to and that there's, a, you know, there's something inside you that feels, I could be this person who wants to get involved and do something about this. And join us on the Discord. Like, we have people hanging out there all the time who are more than willing to guide you as to how to get involved in the organization to answer some of those basic questions that you might have. And remember that this is a, this is a paradigm shift as to how we're dealing with politics. We're not just an overnight flash in the pan. Yes, you know, the election in WA will come and go. This time, next or in just over eight days from now, the election here will be over and we'll all take a breather. But the mission of what it is we're trying to do and accomplish will continue long past the close of, of polls next week. And so if you can't get involved this week, that's fine. There is a long road ahead. And I would encourage you to take the time to figure out how it is you think you could best get involved. Go and do the research and the learning as to, you know, to upskill yourself so that you can add real value. There's no rush. Like if you want to take the time to learn how to code, do that and come back to us in six months time and help out. We'll be here working on this. And we're just really, yeah, we, we really do want more people to get involved because as I said, we are a volunteer organization that will live or die based on the effort that our volunteers put in. So th that's, that's a, let me, let me just have a quick look as to, are there any other questions that have come through on the, on the Facebook from anyone, or is there anything anyone else wants to address? Uh, there's there's one yeah, yeah there's, there's also one that's come through on the liberals for climate um i'll just read it out to you uh, it does look like a long road ahead and that's not a bad thing change takes time uh let's assume that you get elected as a first step and a single representative who is voting in line with the public votes in the digipol app your ability to make a difference via that vote will be relatively limited right but it's about getting people to realize how this app slash process could be used well for the future and allow for more democratic power slash control to the people using the app as knowledge of how it works spreads and hopefully more representatives get elected, right? I'll just put it in text for you as well, buddy. <laughs> that, that question slash comment spot on, like a very astute observation of where we would find ourselves if we, if we get one person elected. 
So the, the circumstances in Western Australia are quite interesting and unique at the moment in that the current Labour government are very likely to retain control of the of the lower house, the Legislative Assembly. And there is a reasonable chance that they may get uh, control of the upper house as well. So let's examine the two scenarios, whether one being where Labour get control, uh, full control of both houses. What role would a single Liberals for Climate flux MP play in that situation? Essentially, they would be a, a true barometer on what the sense of opposition would look, of, of what opposition should entail in Parliament. Because when we think about the role of opposition in Parliament, it is really to serve as the, you know, as the test for any legislation that's been presented to Parliament. Now, in recent times, we will, we will have observed that opposition Okay, I'll I'll take a step back. How far how far back was I muted? Okay. So I was just saying in relation to how a single Liberals for Climate or Flux MP would function inside a uh, the WA parliamentary system as an example. Scenario A where Labour can retain control of both houses of Parliament, the 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 Liberals for Climate Flux MP would serve as a barometer of where the public sit in relation to the legislation that's been passed before or that's been that is before Parliament. In contrast to traditional opposition parties who serve as opposition to test and to refine the legislation that's been presented before Parliament, you can sometimes see that opposition will oppose simply for the purposes of opposing anything that the other side puts forward, whether it's good legislation or not. Taking a step back and thinking about Parliament, the purpose of Parliament uh, is, to, is to pass legislation, to make the laws that we're going to live in our society by. And we want to optimise Parliament to pass good laws as quickly and efficiently as possible and to remove bad laws as quickly and efficiently as possible. And the way that we do that is by having this feedback process currently that is via elections, where every four years we say the laws that have been implemented for the last few years aren't really good laws. We're going to change the legislators and hopefully they'll put in some better laws. With a Liberals for Climate or Flux MP, we'll have that direct feedback in Parliament. So we'll be able to give a true sense of whether the legislation that has been passed is good legislation or well, being perceived as good legislation or perceived as bad legislation. And for the first term, it would be really important for a Flux MP to have an opportunity to really just demonstrate that this is a solution that, that can work, that people can engage with this. In that we don't want to, we don't want to just bring this system and all, all of a sudden uh, have everybody you know, trying to figure out what it is but what is it? How is it going to work? Sitting in Parliament and giving people an opportunity to engage with the system, seeing how it interacts with the parliamentary system, there is a role for it to be, to be used in that, in that sense. That's a scenario A. Now, there's another scenario where, for example, the, the Labour Party don't get control of both houses of, of government and that there is some sort of potential crossbench or coalition of opposition in, in the upper house. In that sense, then we would have, then it would be game on where a, a flux or Liberals for Climate or flux MP would be tasked with voting on legislation in the upper house as decided by people. And it would, it would, it would put it to the test in real time where people would have an opportunity to vote on the legislation that should or should not be passed by, uh, by, by government. And that is, a, that is a huge influence, potential influence to have. Uh, but that all depends on how things play out on election day. So either, in either of those scenarios, I think that there is a really important and viable opportunity for a Liberals for Climate Flux MP to have a real impact in shaping 
how people perceive their ability to interact with Parliament, like to, to see how that process works. And in the in the really interesting and exciting example where a where there is some kind of coalition of parties tasked with being the opposition to the Labour Party in the upper house, there is the potential for Digipol to be a really interesting force and player in getting people directly involved in the legislation really quickly and seeing how Western Australians how Western Australians respond to that opportunity. So I don't know if that uh, addressed the the comment or the question. I'd like to think that it did. Is there any other any other pressing questions? Um, not as of note. Uh, there is one in regards like using a specific platform called Kialo um, to sort of generate legislation and generate the discussion. Um, you know, I. I wouldn't say we're going to use Kialo specifically, but you could go into how we'd plan to do any sort of forum discussion or how that would work, maybe. Yeah. Like so in, in terms of crafting legislation and stuff. Yeah. So, so again, like the, the, what we're proposing around this concept of digital democracy, there is, there, there's a lot of things that will need to be developed and fleshed out in the years to come. And one will be, in time, how would we go about the process of crafting and, and having a, you know, a decentralized, open discussion on uh, you know, creating legislation? And there are a number of platforms that exist out there that allow people to you know, have these sorts of conversations. And so I, I've always said that we're trying to build a, a, a digital democracy ecosystem. and the the functionality that we're bringing, giving people the ability to interact with the legislation as it is before Parliament, that's just one part of the ecosystem. Aspects like uh, having discussions around various policy issues, having discussions around issues, these are all other parts of the ecosystem that will need to be built out and developed in time. And whether that happens via you know, organic groups popping up on other well-developed platforms or whether we develop new platforms ourselves, that's all still a work in progress. But we're not going, we're not going to try and make, uh, you know, we'll say Digipol as an example, to be all things for all people just yet. We're going to try and get the core functionality of giving people that ability to interact with the legislation that's before Parliament, get that sorted and solid, give people the ability to vote and for the MP to act in line with what people propose via the app. We want to get all of that stuff uh, really well developed, get the user experience to a point where it's really intuitive and easy for new people to come on board and find out, find the legislation they're looking for and to, to take part. And we will, uh, like, I'm a great believer from my own observations in the online we'll say kind of the, the whole decentralized open source world that as people start to identify problems that need to be solved, people will come along and develop solutions for those problems. And so I'm really excited to see in the, the way in which our community and the broader ecosystem starts, you know, starts approaching these problems and the ways that we start building out solutions. And we will see communities starting to come together on Discord channels on other platforms, people will start building new platforms. But it's all like these are all solutions that are being developed at the moment. We're not going to claim to have the definitive architecture that solves all the problems for everybody. We're saying this is the pathway that we're taking, this is the functionality that we want to bring, and the problems that we want to serve in the solve in the in the short to medium term. And as we develop over the medium to longer term, we will start expanding our portfolio, I won't say portfolio, expanding our horizons as to what it is we consider to be core functionality of our, of our ecosystem. Cool. That seems like a wrap on questions for now. Yeah. If I, I, I think that might be, that might be an appropriate 
place for us to to look at wrapping. We'll just go around the group. Is there any kind of closing comments or observations or anything that people want to share before we before we wrap up? Alex, do you have any any closing comments? Uh, yeah, I'd say uh, thank you very much for everyone who's uh, joined us and, and is watching in the future. Um, I think just to reiterate, uh, whenever you watch this, the Discord will still be active. Jump up, jump on up there, ask your questions, get involved. Um, there's some really, really interesting debates in all those developers, philosophy, all sorts of stuff. And uh, any question you've asked is, is probably a question that's been brought up in some capacity. And if it's not, we'll be very excited because it's always uh, always great to have another opinion. Awesome. Ben. Um, yeah, I'll just, I'll just keep it short. Um, head to digipole.app in your browser um, or search Digipole in your app store because if, if you understand this idea, having it in your hand just really makes you able to see where this is going, I feel. So download Digipole, basically that's all I've got to say. Right on. And I'll, I'll just, I'll offer there the closing remarks of the evening. And again, just reiterate what everyone has said. Thanks to everybody for, for watching. Watching is just the first step in getting involved. I really do want to put, put the, the message out there for people about encouraging you to get involved in some way, shape or form, whether it is as Alex described earlier via sharing content or getting involved in the run-up to elections or helping us develop materials or and taking an active role in the organization, or whether it's in the way that uh, Ben Kelly has just, you know, described some of the technology. If you're a developer and you want a way to help participate in building out some technology that could really have a profound, a profound impact on the way that our society develops and takes shape over the next few years, I think that the Digipol app and the technology that's been developed there, it ranks among one of the most interesting social technology uh, projects that anybody could contribute their time and energy to. And I, I, want, to, I want to thank every, the, everyone on the call this evening, Alex the, and the two Bens, and just draw attention to the fact that they're over on the East Coast, I'm here on the West Coast, speaking to the fact that we are a distributed, decentralized organization who reach out, and all volunteers who reach out and help each other and are building this organization based on the, the time and effort that people put in because we believe that this is a project that is worth spending our own time, energy, and money on to try and get more people aware of the fact that there is a way for us to improve politics. But ultimately, it requires people to take responsibility for being part of that improvement. And right now, I'm speaking to you, anybody who's watching this, and I hope that you will form part of that uh, improvement by helping us out if you're in WA, either as a volunteer on election day, or at the very least, voting number one, Liberals for Climate, helping us get a candidate elected, hopefully me in the North Metro region, but we have candidates running in all of the other areas as well. And your support on the ballot would be really, really, really well received because it demonstrates to us that people are listening to what it is that we're saying. People are paying attention to us. People are downloading the app. And I encourage you, download the app. Start having a play around with it. Get a feel for it. Give us feedback on what works well, what doesn't work well. And this is what we want. This is, we want, this is how we're trying to get you involved. So please join us on this journey because if, it's, if you don't join us, you know, we'll only get so far. We need more people coming on board, more energy, more volunteers, more enthusiasm, more questions, more answers, more fun, more live streams, more comments, more likes, more shares, more of everything. Just, just so, to that point, apparently uh, my earlier statements were muted, so I might just reiterate them uh, just very briefly. Just uh, so sorry, sorry to everyone about that. Uh, still, still learning uh, some of the streaming tech. Um, my main point that I was uh, trying to make is that I started being someone who just kind of was like, I don't know, really know what this thing is. I'm curious. I want to learn more. Uh, and I just joined the Discord and I started asking questions and I got some really good responses. And over time, I started building up my own opinion, 
which might not always be the exact same as, you know, the party. And that's what's really valuable, right? Having different people who think different ways and working out how to reconcile that to make the best system possible. Uh, and if you are one of those people, that is exactly what you should do. You should jump on and, you know, say hi and ask questions and challenge us. That's the really important part. You know, being challenged is how uh, this, this stuff improves. It uh, proposes new ideas and forms new solutions. Excellent. And on, on that, we might just wrap up. And again, thank you everybody for watching, for taking the time. Uh, follow the links, send us comments, vote number one, Liberals for Climate, get involved, tell your friends, and hopefully we'll see you either in person or online sometime soon. Thank you very much.